What if we made Sailor Moon with consequences? This was undoubtedly the question which prompted Studio Shaft to produce the 2011 anime Pola Magi Madoka Magica, which consisted of 12 episodes showcasing a new, darker take on the magical girl genre. Over the course of its story, many viewers fell in love with its tight plot, endearing characters, and adorable art style. The success of the show even prompted a movie in 2013 titled Rebellion. The ending of the movie was extremely divisive and is still a hot topic of discussion to this day. In Rebellion's final moments, it seemed to leave room for a potential continuation in the future, but as of this recording, it's yet to manifest. However, in 2017, a gacha game spin-off for mobile devices was released in Japan called Magia Record. In the game, players follow new protagonist Iroha Tamaki as she tries to find her missing sister in Kamihama, a city bursting at the seams with various magical girls. Its story is much lighter in tone than the original Madoka, but it's serviceable for what the game is trying to do. As a gacha game, there needs to be lots of characters for players to recruit and character lotteries called Fate Weaves, so Kamihama is the perfect setting. Not only that, but Iroha's open-ended goal of finding her sister leaves lots of room to introduce new characters. Magia Record made its way over to North American app stores in 2019, along with the announcement that an anime adaptation would be releasing sometime in 2020. The first season of the Magia Record anime just finished airing, and I would like to talk about it. I'm a pretty firm believer that an adaptation should be able to stand on its own, so I'm not really going to be drawing any comparisons to the mobile game. However, I will be coming at it from the point of someone who has seen both the original Madoka series as well as the Rebellion movie. I'm doing this because I feel like as a spin-off, its primary demographic is people who are already familiar with the series. So even though I know there are some people who went into this uh, without watching Madoka or Rebellion, I still think that's the best way to approach it. So the story starts out pretty solid in my opinion. The first episode introduces us to Iroha and Kuroe, two magical girls who, after fighting a witch, end up in Kamihama City. There, they encounter another, stronger witch. In its labyrinth, Iroha encounters a baby Kyubei that makes her remember that she used to have a younger sister named Ui. Iroha and Kuroe are saved by an older magical girl named Yachio, who tells them to leave Kamihama because witches are stronger here than in other cities. Kuroe also mentions that there's a rumor going around that magical girls can be saved in Kamihama City. The audience, of course, can infer what salvation might entail, however, and so a solid foundation of intrigue has been laid out. So after the first episode, we've been introduced to four new characters and four new mysteries. Why are witches stronger in Kamihama City? How can magical girls be saved there? Why is there a baby Kyubei? What happened to Iroha's sister? The show goes on to explore the depths of these characters and resolve these mysteries in a really satisfying way, just like Madoka Magica did. Or that's what I'd hoped. In episode 2, Iroha encounters three new magical girls, Momoko, Rena, and Kaede. Out of the goodness of her heart, Iroha tries to resolve the conflict that arises between Kaede and Reina. However, Kaede gets kidnapped by a witch. That's weird, were witches always able to kidnap magical girls? In episode 3, we start out in a flashback and meet two new characters, Ui's friends Toka and Nemu. Later in the episode, Iroha, Momoko, and Rena visit a new magical girl named Mitama to ask for help finding out where the witch took Kaede. After getting some advice from Mitama, they team up with Yachio, find Kaede, and destroy the witch. Except it wasn't a witch. Nobody seems too bothered by this revelation. Also, Mami shows up. So, by the end of episode 3, we've met 10 new characters, 7 of which are magical girls. Out of the original 4 mysteries, none of them have been answered, which isn't really a problem this early in, but what is a problem is that none of them have really been explored or developed at all. There isn't any discussion about why the witches are stronger, no magical girls have been saved, nobody is as weirded out by baby Kyubei as they should be, and Iroha has barely made any headway on finding her sister. Instead, the audience now has a fifth mystery to keep track of. What the hell was that thing they were fighting if it wasn't a witch? This outlines the major problem with Magia Record. Its pacing is very poor. It continually throws new characters, ideas, and mysteries at the viewer without resolving or, more importantly, expanding upon its foundation. Later on, the story also introduces doppels, which serve as a temporary witch form once a girl's soul gem becomes too tainted, and then they just... are okay afterwards. Alright, I guess that solves one mystery, but again, it introduces another. How do doppels exist? After that, there's the introduction of a magical girl cult called the Wings of the Magius, who fight to defend the not-witch creatures, which are called Uasa. The cult follows the orders of the three Magius, who require the Uasa in order to achieve their goal of spreading the doppel phenomenon across the world. Okay, another mystery. How do the Uasa contribute to magical girl liberation? Later in the show, we meet one of the Magius named Alina, who is able to trap witches in pocket dimensions and, like, breed them, I guess? Why? In the final moments of the last episode, Alina talks to herself, saying that she hopes Walpurgis Night comes soon. Huh? 
So yeah, Magia Records' first season feels like way too much time is spent setting up all of these mysteries, and then adding mysteries within the mysteries. This isn't even a comprehensive list of all the mysteries. Here, I'll add another, just for fun. Even if every single one of these questions is answered in Season 2, it won't change the fact that this first season is horribly paced. The story just isn't delivered in a way that makes viewers feel invested in what's happening, which is kind of essential if you want people to stick around long enough to see these mysteries get solved. The biggest thing halting investment in Magia Records' story, I think, is its lack of stakes. In Madoka Magica, Mami's death served the narrative purpose of showing that our main characters were not safe from the threat of witches. Here, witches frequently feel like a minor inconvenience to these characters, and the show seems to feel that way too. Heck, in episode 11, they just straight up skip over a witch battle, like, hello? Who thought that undermining the gravity that witches used to carry in Madoka was a good idea? The Uwasa and the Wings of the Magius aren't great stand-ins either, as they're frequently very easy for the characters to deal with. The final nail in the coffin is the Doppel Phenomenon, which removes any sense of urgency in purifying one's soul gem. Also, with so many characters taking up screen time, there are very few that feel fleshed out, so it's not like the character writing gives the viewer a lot to be invested in either. Which brings me to... I'm just going to give a super brief overview about how I feel about some of these characters, because there really are a lot of them, and what better, more timeless way is there to do that than through a TikTok meme format? So that's what I'm going to do. Here we go. She's fine as a kind of audience insert, sort of serving the same role that Madoka did in the sense that we learn about the plot alongside her. She shows up in the first episode, and then again in the last episode, and that's it. She's the most well-written character in the show and like actually has an interesting backstory and development. Also, she serves looks every episode, which is more than I can say for most of these other characters. Despite how little screen time she gets past the third episode, she they actually developed her like big sister archetype pretty well. Her outfit is the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my life though, so she loses points for that. They tried to give her depth in the third episode by like explaining why she was a tsundere, but like they didn't actually show why she is the way she is, so it didn't really work. And also she was the same even after they saved Kaede, so. She's cute, but really dumb for putting up with Rena's bullshit. Mitama is the most interesting character in this whole series because her crib is whack and she also has like an unhealthy fixation with ketchup. If the show was just about her chilling, it would be 10 times better. She's very Sayaka-esque with her gung-ho attitude, but her and Yachio's like past beef isn't explored enough to give her some much needed depth. She's very Kyoko-esque with her like lone wolf shtick, but she's also super flimsy and irritating. Also her parents died, so now she acts like a caricature of Eren Yeager, which I guess the writers confused for depth. Her only traits are looking sad, running away, and secretly longing for Yachio's embrace. Next to Yachio, she's the best character. Like, they actually made me give a crap about her. I cried in episode 9 when her and I, like, got separated and, and stuff. Um, however, her abusive family is, like, cartoonishly evil, so it feels, like, a bit unrealistic and that takes away from her a little, I think. She feels really out of place amongst all these other characters. Her whole thing is like, aren't I crazy? And it's like, well, there's a lot of other anime girls who have that same kind of shtick going on. Despite this, she's still fun to watch on screen. She could have been a really cool and empathetic character that wanted to help magical girls, but the writers decided to parade her around as like a creepy little girl archetype instead. Also, she has no morals because she's a scientist, apparently. Anyways, moving on. I've kind of bashed on this show up until now, but I do want to end on a positive note. Magia Record frequently looks absolutely stellar. The background art and CG are some of the best I've seen in a TV anime, and the animation has some cool moments. The direction is often really smart and well done, so that even when it doesn't feel like Madoka Magica, it at least looks like it. The music, though not as instantly memorable as Yuki Kaijura's score on Madoka, has some standout tracks that fit many of the scenes really well. The only gripe I have in terms of the presentation is that this show has some of the worst action sequences I've seen in animation. Especially in later episodes, the characters look super stiff and the direction is not doing them any favors. It's frequently a challenge to parse what's happening during fights, which is a shame since the slower scenes are directed really well. Overall, Magia Record as an anime fails to live up to its predecessor's standard of quality. Even beyond that comparison, it kind of fails to live up to my general standard of quality. <laughs> Its plot and characters are somewhat mediocre, but its pleasing presentation will delight those who value visuals and audio over all else. If you're looking for tight storytelling and well-rounded characters, Magia Record probably isn't the show for you. Uh, personally, I think it's best enjoyed if you just don't take it too seriously and have fun with its messier moments. That's how I'm going to be approaching the second season whenever that airs, while I wait patiently for a Rebellion sequel that is um, more up to par with the standards I'd hope. <laughs> 
Remember that everything I've said in this video is just my subjective take on the show, so if you loved Magia Record, then power to you. If you agree or disagree with some of my analysis, feel free to chime in in the comments, we can engage in a discussion, just be nice about it. Also, I'm thinking of uploading another video later this week, or maybe like later in the month, eh, where I sort of like go into how I would have adapted Magia Record's story into an anime differently, and like the choices that I feel would have been smart and made it more cohesive. So if that sounds like something you're interested in listening to slash watching, then watch out for that. Um, otherwise, thanks for watching, and I hope that everyone has a great day, and if you play Magia Record, the game, I hope that you have the best luck in Fate Weaves. Bye!